In today's video, we're going to talk about how to heal quickly and effectively after hip and knee surgeries, particularly hip replacement and knee replacement surgeries. Hey folks, it's Melissa here with Natural Health Resources. Thanks for joining my YouTube video. I'm so excited to do this demonstration for you today. I have had a lot of questions and actually a series of surgical, post-surgical healing cases in my practice that are really inspiring this video. And so I know their questions are probably going to translate to you and your healing process. So if you are coming to this video and you have recently had hip replacement surgery or knee replacement surgery, you're in the right spot. Today, I wanna to specifically talk about several different ways to naturally heal from hip and knee surgery and how to speed up the healing process to minimize pain, swelling, and get you back to your normal life. And actually, with these types of surgeries, you often feel a lot better after the surgery. So today, I'm going to show you some demonstrations of how to heal. And I'm in my bed because usually with this type of surgery and the recovery, you're gonna be in bed. And so I am wanting to show you how to actually use some tools and how to implement these in the healing process. So the first thing that I wanna talk about, and many of you, if you're coming to my channel and you're new, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about post-surgical healing and I always recommend using Arnica. And so I wanna show you some of the things that you wanna make sure you have in your toolbox of healing. If you happen to be watching this video before surgery, I would encourage you to check out my post, pre and post healing uh, surgical recovery guide. And I actually have that here. You can download up here. There's a link there and there's information down below. But specifically, many of the things we talk about in this video are in that and a ton more uh, menu dietary options as well. The Arnica is something that I always recommend for individuals before they get on the surgical table to implement in their routine a few days before surgery. It's a homeopathic product that actually helps minimize swelling and reduces inflammation. So you wanna make sure you're not inflamed and you're as swelling free before surgery. And in most cases, if you're getting your hips replaced, or your knees replaced, there's some sort of fluid happening that's been causing your pain and usually is a source for uh, your surgical uh, need. So Arnica tablets, uh, these are really great to implement in your daily routine before surgery and definitely immediately after surgery. And then um, I like to recommend folks get Arnica cream and actually apply topically on the, in a, around the surgical site, not necessarily on the incision, um, but in that space around uh, that area, usually a, a good quadrant. Um, the, the product that I use every day in my practice when I see my post-surgical cases for lymphatic therapy is tea relief gel. This stuff is fantastic. It's, it has Arnica and 12 other super powerful swelling reducing, healing enhancing ingredients. And it's um, just a, a very light based uh, gel that you smear all over topically. They have liquid of these and tabs that you can incorporate in your routine as well. I'll put some links down below uh, to, to buy this on Amazon, but this stuff is fantastic. I, if there's one thing you do, you have to do this and you have to make sure that your body is aligned when you're sleeping because that's a whole nother topic. And re really the root of uh, many questions that I get is how how do I sleep uh, and manage to get good sleep? Sleep is healing, we all know that. Sleep is rejuvenating and regenerating, but after the surgery, how do, I, how do I get my body aligned so that I can sleep well? So I also wanna demonstrate how to do that. And I have never had any surgeries where I've had hips or knees uh, worked on, but during my pregnancy, a uh, particularly cushiony foam pillow was quite magical for my case. And so uh, foam pillows and cushy pillows in between your knees are going to be really important for your healing recovery. And as you see these pillows behind me, these aren't always the best. So there, you actually don't want to use your home pillows. You wanna use 
products like this. So I have my cushy foam pillow. I'm going to demonstrate this. Cushy form is the, the product that I use and implement uh, with my my own body when I was pregnant and then also with my surgical cases uh, post-surgery. But what I want to show you is how to actually incorporate this into your sleep routine. Okay, folks, I want to demonstrate how to use your cushy form pillow to um, actually enhance your sleep. So the first thing I'm going to lay so that you can see, but you're, you normally align yourself at the top of your pillow. So you want to or top of your bed. So get your pillow here. And the non-surgical side is the side you're gonna be laying on. So you never want to lay on the incision site if it's your knee or your hip, okay? So that's number one. Number two, usually three to four days after your surgery is usually the recommended time where you can sleep on your side. Now, the catch is you, you don't wanna have any drains or active uh, fluid coming out of the incision site. So I've had some cases I've had hematomas or they have drains actively in the surgical site. You want to wait until all of that is healed and out so that it's there's no sort of drainage coming from that area. So what you want to do is you want to kind of slowly, now keep this, keep your, let's say, I'm just for demo purposes, my left side is going to be the surgical side. So what you want to do is you want to kind of deactivate this side. So as you're getting positioned, you want to put more pressure put more pressure on this bottom area. So you wanna kinda of get position. So you, you know, you might actually need help if you have caregivers just to kinda of help uh, support this leg. But you wanna kinda of get in your normal position. Okay, so get kinda of get your head down. And then your pillow, the cushy form pillow, you just wanna put right here in between your leg. So you put this leg out. And what's great about these types of pillows, okay, they have a, a divot. As you can see here, they have a space where you're going to put your leg. So you just position this right here, okay? And what it does is it deactivates these muscles. It just allows this leg, the surgical incision and the leg that is has been operated on, it allows it to be immobilized and resting. That's what we want, okay? And this is actually great for your spinal alignment. So when you're sleeping, you'll actually notice you're feeling better. It, it minimizes a lot of the pain and it just sets up the structure so that you're healing better. So in this position, you can lay here, you can rest, you can actually sleep at night. A lot of folks will actually rehab and recoup in their, their home, in their beds, their bedrooms have TV. So you can literally be in this uh, kind of deactivated position for longer than your normal sleep cycle. Um, and then you want to make sure you're doing your physical therapy. But the other thing in this position, if you have a hip replacement surgery, there's usually going to be an incision here. This is a great time for you to apply the tea relief gel. And if you have not watched my dry skin brushing video, check this out here. I actually have a free guide that you can download just need your email, it'll tell you how to do dry skin brushing. But you wanna make sure you do your dry skin brushing. Now this is really important because dry skin brushing will in, it'll actually, I'm gonna sit up, it will motivate your lymphatics. And so motivating your lymphatics gets the swelling reducing, it promotes the healing, and it gets your body and that surgical incision to a point where it's recovering faster. If you can quickly reduce swelling and inflammation, you're gonna heal faster. You're gonna experience less bruising. The tea relief gel will cut bruising significantly. If you do check out my surgical recovery guide, this amazing download here, I wrote it. It's an 18 week program. It's two or three weeks before surgery, foods to eat, things to do, skincare, to kind of get your body and your stress and emotional state in the right state for healing to optimize as soon as surgery hits and post-surgical healing that you're maximizing that. And so this incorporates a lot of good, good tips and tools. If you want to download that, there's a link below. It's $14.99, that guide. But I highlight utilizing this tea relief gel, um, particularly as soon as you get out in that first week where you're puffy and uh, feeling quite overwhelmed with bruising and you're really sore. This cuts pain, it cuts bruising, it cuts inflammation. It's fantastic. I have clients that have surgeries 
and their physicians, their sur surgeons are shocked that they don't look like they've been run over by a bus. And if you are sitting here and you've just gone through surgery, you know that feeling. You know, if you're looking down and you have some crazy black, dark, dark, deep, contusion-y like bruises, those bruises are going to impair your healing process. So you want to flush that out. Why we do dry skin brushing, and we'll get back to this, okay? So you're, you're resting and you're here on your pillow. How you're gonna start dry skin brushing for this lower extremity? You're actually going to start on the belly. So if you expose your belly button, if you're wearing a nice cotton shirt, you wanna do brushing on the dry skin. And you literally are going to do circles. So counterclockwise circles around your belly button and you go as low as you can go down into the hips and in the groin, okay? And then I like to have the removable handles because you can slip your hand in here, super easy to use. What you wanna do without engaging your hip, you're gonna to wanna to just put, place this brush right where the hip and the leg meet, interior, okay? Most of the time, hip replacements are gonna be posterior, the outside, the inside, you just want to do a sweeping, very gentle sweeping. There are inguinal lymph nodes that, there's a whole assortment here, that are meant to drain your lymphatics of your legs. These lymphatics, generally the lymph nodes will be swollen or tender or tight to the touch after surgery. So you want to invigorate your lymphatic system by just doing gentle sweeps, nothing major. It's down in the pelvic pubic region. Um, you're never going to be going below the pubic bone, but it's literally where the hip and the leg meet. And then avoiding your incision site by about four to five inches, you're going to gently brush. Now this, again, you're going to want to do this on, on skin. Most of the time you're going to have exposed leg, exposed hip, and you're just going to want to gently brush up, up and around your incision. Dry skin brushing around the incision site is simply putting your hand in here, placing it on your leg, no pressure, and just moving it up. And you want to try to move it to that internal hip groin area, moving the flow, and then back out and around, around your butt. And you can even go down to the knee. Now, if you have a caregiver, which most of you usually will have somebody at home helping, then you pop the handle back in and they can, they can do the rest. Now, if you don't, or you wanna do this independently, you wanna take this, get your handle back on, keep your leg stable, and you sweep behind the knee. Okay, so gentle sweeps, and then you just move it up gently, again, avoiding the incision, and you're just moving it. It's, it's so gentle. That movement is going to be really helpful for moving the lymphatics. Now that's dry skin brushing to move the lymphatics. The same applies on the knee. Now when you're dry skin brushing in and around the knee, you're actually gonna go all the way down to the ankle bone. And so that will require some help from a caregiver. But even doing that flushing here in the inter in inguinals, the interior part of your hip where your hip and leg meet, that will help move the fluid out. I hope this was helpful. What I try to do is impart helpful healing tips and resources for your wellness toolbox. That is what my mission is, is to give you tools, resources, and recommendations that I know have been proven helpful for my community of patients and other communities that are trying to heal naturally. And so dry skin brushing, your, your little um, cushy form, your pillow that is specifically designed to be put in between your legs is crucial. The tea relief gel is another item that you want to have. The arnica tabs um, is, is super helpful internally. And then the other thing, check out my guide. It's so helpful. I have so many people that love that guide, find it super helpful. But again, these were tips for you so that you uh, have enhanced healing, get better faster, and actually see the benefits of your surgery so that you can get back to a normal life. If this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I'm grateful for your time and I hope you will stay tuned for my next video. Have a great day, everybody. So a lot of you ask, how can I reach you? How can I ask you a specific health question? And how can I do it in a private format? And I respect HIPAA confidentiality. and know sometimes it's a little too public when you're communicating in the description 
questions. So I actually have partnered up with a really cool new app. It's called Instant Go. You can download Instant, that's what it looks like, in your app store. You download it in your app store. You can open the app and search for me in the doctor medical community. And my profile name is Dr. Melissa Gallagher. And uh, I'll provide a link below. But it's a way for you to communicate uh, your questions. I can respond in a text. I can, uh, we can coordinate a phone call and it's based on the uh, messaging. So we can chat for 12 minutes and it charges you 12 minutes, charges for the text. And very soon they'll be having video chatting so I can actually see your body and look at your incisions and have a normal consultation like I do with my patients via Skype and FaceTime. It allows us to communicate effectively and respecting our HIPAA laws and your privacy. So if you are interested in doing that, please check out Instant Go. My profile is Dr. Melissa Gallagher. And if I can answer any of your questions, I hope you will shoot me a text and boom, it's right then and there, super quick and easy. And it's a way I can answer a lot of your questions and correspond in a private format, private setting, uh, and get specific tailored information and advice and recommendations from me to you. So I hope you'll check out Instant Go. The other thing that I often recommend is ginger tea, ginger tea, hot ginger tea or chilled ginger tea. Sometimes you can mix it with pear or peach to kind of flavor it up. Ginger tea will help move the lymphatics as well. So if you're laying on your side and you're resting, choose water, fresh pineapple juice, and ginger tea. Those are going to be really good hydrators that move the lymphatics that help you uh, reduce your swelling. Super helpful.